Starship Flight 3 is going to lift off. The giant machine will quickly begin its groundbreaking journey into orbit and with a big splashdown into the sea. However, at the last minute, SpaceX suddenly changed the above plan. Instead of Hawaii in the Pacific Ocean, SpaceX recently revealed a different splashdown location for Starship. So, where exactly has SpaceX's new splashdown plan changed? Why is SpaceX making such changes? How will Starship splash down? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Only four months after the second launch, SpaceX has nearly completed all upgrades for Starship along with improvements to the ground support system for their third flight. Now SpaceX is ready and they can launch Starship whenever permitted. If indeed the target launch effort SpaceX is aiming for is on March 14th, this will be a milestone as Trip Harris, SpaceX's launch site director, tweeted, This third Starship launch would significantly break our record for the gap between second and third flights of a new launch vehicle, which had a greater than a year gap for both Falcon 1 and Falcon 9. Let's go! This is truly commendable, and nothing would be more wonderful than if the third flight achieves orbit. We can't predict the outcome of this flight, but Elon Musk, the head of SpaceX, has stated 70 to 80% with his third flight. This assertion's not baseless, as everything from the rocket hardware for the flight and infrastructure over at Starbase to the flight schedule has undergone significant changes. With upgrades and improvements to the flight hardware or repairs at Starbase, we've discussed many of these changes in previous videos. If you want to understand these changes better, click on the link below this video. Now let's see how SpaceX has revamped the flight schedule to increase the success rate of Starship in the upcoming third flight. The first major milestone to watch for in this test launch is the ascent burn of both stages. But what's particularly noteworthy about this test is that it includes several never-before-attempted goals. In the first and second flights of Starship, SpaceX's objective was to launch Starship from Boca Chica, Texas, maintain the launch pad, achieve stage separation, and reach orbit. The booster stage was intended to descend in the Gulf of Mexico, while the upper stage would travel eastward around the globe and land in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii after re-entry. For this Starship launch, SpaceX first aims to successfully open and close Starship's payload door while the ship's coasting after engine cutoff. This is an important step towards realizing its potential for cargo and crew transportation missions. SpaceX's immediate future focus is to transport numerous Starlink satellites before Starship is actually permitted to carry humans. During the upper stage's coast phase, approximately 13 minutes after the payload door test, a propellant transfer demonstration will occur. This demonstration is a significant component of the test related to NASA's tipping point program assigned to SpaceX. The program requires for the company to transfer 10 tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen between internal tanks within the Starship, making an unprecedented scale in space operations. Furthermore, SpaceX aims to achieve the first ever reignition of a Raptor engine while in space. This milestone is anticipated to occur 40 minutes into the flight for the upper stage of Starship and will be closely monitored as it will determine the spacecraft's agility and adaptability. One can envision a future where Starship must land on the moon and require the reignition of Raptor engines to enable astronauts return from the lunar surface to the Orion spacecraft or the Gateway Lunar Orbit Station. Following the successful reignition of the Raptor engine, SpaceX will proceed with a controlled re-entry of Starship, aiming for a landing in the Indian Ocean instead of the Pacific as planned for previous Starship missions. This adjustment reduces the overall mission duration from 90 minutes to an hour, potentially enhancing Starship's chances of success. With just the right amount of time, neither too short nor too long, the journey of Ship 28 is now reduced to two-thirds of its previous duration. However, this reduction does not diminish the evaluation factors of SpaceX's flight. Instead, it could mark a glorious historic achievement if successful. What's interesting about this test is the new flight path, which allows for the testing of these additional milestones while prioritizing public safety, as noted by the company. This has led to the second modification in SpaceX's schedule for the third Starship flight, a new countdown. The countdown has also changed compared to the previous flight test. The earliest launch could take place at 8 a.m. Eastern Time on March 14th. This time, it begins counting down approximately 1 hour and 15 minutes prior to liftoff, with the SpaceX flight director conducting a pull and verifying readiness for the propellant load. Subsequent milestones include the commencement of LOX and fuel loading for both the ship and booster stages, which this time will only happen approximately 53 minutes before the liftoff instead of approximately 90 minutes. This efficiency stems from SpaceX's continuous upgrades to the tank farm system, an ongoing project spanning several months. Therefore, the fueling process for this launch has been expedited, leading to the possibility of completion in less than an hour. 
This improvement was demonstrated in a recent wet dress rehearsal test where SpaceX efficiently loaded over 10 million pounds of fuel in just 45 minutes, a significant improvement compared to the previous 90-minute duration. Furthermore, SpaceX will prioritize fueling the booster. This is a strategic decision due to its larger size compared to the Starship. This sequence ensures that both stages are fueled simultaneously, minimizing the risk of fuel wastage due to waiting times. On the other hand, starting with a booster enhances mass distribution and stability, preventing the significant 1,300-ton upper stage from exerting excessive pressure on the lower stage. Final verification for launch will take place 30 seconds before liftoff, with the engine ignition starting at T-3 seconds. Once the countdown reaches zero, the flight test timeline kicks off, with more or less the same events of IFT-2. First is the ignition process. This process will last three to five seconds. This rapid process minimizes the thrust impact on the launch pad, despite SpaceX's infrastructure improvements. During liftoff, all 33 engines ignite simultaneously, generating unparalleled thrust after takeoff. This will be a spectacle that I'm sure none of us will be able to take our eyes off. Before igniting the engines, the water deluge system activates, spraying approximately 350,000 gallons of water to mitigate the heat and high pressure generated by those 33 engines. SpaceX's confirmation of the system's effectiveness after the second flight ensures its utilization in Flight 3. After leaving the launch pad, Starship and Super Heavy will begin their trajectory southeastward towards the Gulf of Mexico. Both stages will encounter the Max-Q moment, where the vehicles experience the highest mechanical stress. Following Max-Q, the crucial stage separation will occur, with the booster engine cutoff and the hot stage separation similar to what worked in the second flight. Speaking about the booster, SpaceX hopes this time to complete a full boost backburn with a successful engine restart, followed by a landing burn, which will bring the first stage to a soft vertical landing in the Gulf of Mexico. Awesome! Can't wait for this spectacular performance with thousands of exciting moments. Make sure to find the best spots for a morning filled with joy and excitement as the Starship takes off. At this point, the only remaining item is to finalize the modification of that launch license, awaiting approval before the test flight can proceed. But don't worry too much about that, because Christian Davenport, a reliable space reporter, often provides the earliest updates whenever FAA announces. He said on X, the FAA is very close to approving the license modification for the third SpaceX Starship launch attempt, I'm told. Furthermore, SpaceX has also completed all the corrective actions required by the FAA, evidenced by the readiness of the entire Starship system and their busy modifications and preparations over the past few days. And most importantly, SpaceX acknowledges the issues in previous flights, so they can learn from those lessons in the upcoming launch. During a company talk given earlier this year at Starbase in South Texas, SpaceX founder Elon Musk explained why they believe Starship failed to reach orbit during its second flight test. Flight 2 almost actually made it into orbit. In fact, ironically, if it had a payload, it would have made it into orbit, said SpaceX founder Elon Musk during a company talk earlier this year. The reason that it didn't quite make it to orbit was because we vented the liquid oxygen and the liquid oxygen ultimately led to a fire and an explosion. We wanted to vent the liquid oxygen because we normally wouldn't have had that liquid oxygen if we had a payload. So ironically, if it had a payload, it would have reached orbit. And so I think we got a really good shot at Region Orbit with Flight 3, he added. This clearly demonstrates SpaceX's commitment to every launch, a core cultural value of the company. It's a built test learn philosophy that diverges significantly from traditional aerospace practices. This approach facilitates quicker innovation and adaptation to real-world challenges. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.